This was my first time ever driving a Tesla. It was a rental from Hertz with unlimited miles and it was fairly cheap. So I didn't want to just take it on a short road trip. I wanted to stick it to the rental companies and take the Tesla as far as I could go. But why stop there? Why not go as far as I could go while going to an entire different country? And that's exactly what I did. And I'll be telling you my detailed experience driving 1400 miles, driving a Tesla and driving a rental car across the US border. What literally motivated my road trip was I just woke up one day and I was like, I really want to drive a Tesla. And the only rental company I knew was renting out Teslas was Hertz. So I typed in the location I was living at, Lexington, Kentucky, and I wanted to try to set up like a weekend road trip. So starting on a Friday, pick up at 8 a.m. And then doing some research at the local Hertz, the Hertz was closed on Sunday, so we couldn't return the car back on Sunday. So we decided to return the car on Tuesday, also at 8 a.m. so you wouldn't be charged an extra day. And the rental Tesla at the time we booked it, at the better price of the pay now, it was $267.56. It was cheaper or similar price to the other sedans that Hertz was renting out. So it was a no brainer to rent out the Tesla. However, I did know that I could get a better price on this booking because I know recently the American Express Platinum card added the benefit of getting presidential circle by holding the American Express Platinum card. And then there it was. So I quickly enrolled in the presidential circle status with Hertz, which gave me guaranteed upgrades, earning extra points. I could choose different cars in the ultimate choice section if that was available to me, a dedicated rewards hotline and a free additional driver. Oh, just a note, if you sign up for the presidential circle using the American Express Platinum card, it does take 24 hours for that status to take effect. They're nice benefits, but not the benefits I was seeking for this trip. What was more appetizing was the Amex corporate discount code, which is seen here, 211762. By using this code, I could get four extra grace hours, guaranteed car class upgrades on certain class vehicles within 24 hours, but the most important benefit, a 20% savings on the base rates of hurt rental cars. So I took that code, went back to Hertz, edited the itinerary, in the promotion code type in that number 211762 and then click continue, thereby lowering the cost of my rental to $214.05. Pretty good deal if I say so myself. But also since I'm using the American Express promotion code, I could also extend my reservation for an extra 4 hours. So on the day I had to return to Tesla, I moved that 8am to noon. They won't charge you for bringing it early, however they will charge you you bring it late. So it's always good to take advantage of that grace period if you have American Express credit card. Also, if you want this grace period, you have to do it during booking. I read online that a lot of people try to take advantage of the grace period, but Hertz won't honor it if it's not on the reservation. So then just book as normal for the rental car, go through the process, add on any protections or insurances that you want to add. Personally for me, I didn't add the lost damage waiver since the credit card I'm using to book this reservation covers that benefit for free. So it's nice that I don't have to pay $32 a day. I did pay for the liability protection, especially since this is the first time I've ever driven a Tesla or any type of EV. And the liability insurance is basically if you cause damage to someone else and they decided to sue you and to cover their car damages, then you would be covered. Versus the lost damage waiver is only insurance covering the rental car you'll be driving in. So after I selected the extra options that I wanted to go with for my rental, I just checked out as normal and I couldn't wait for the day to come. But the day finally came, April 7th, a Friday. We woke up early, headed to the Hertz. We arrived a little bit early, but they let us in and everything else is pretty normal what you expect at a rental car place. Handed over my ID, the credit card I used to book the rental car. However, one thing I read online was getting a temporary Canadian insurance card, which apparently would have been some sort of yellow card. And you have to tell the rental place that you're planning to go to Canada. I asked the rental desk about this and they looked at me really confused. They had no clue what I was talking about. However, they've assured me that other people take their rental cars to Canada all the time without needing the Canadian insurance. So after after a bit of back and forth just making sure that I really didn't need it. I just took their word on it and I hoped that nothing bad would happen at the border because at this point I could no longer cancel my hotels while getting a full refund which would have really sucked. All right, fine, I trust them for right now. And in a couple minutes, they gave me the rental agreement along with pre-inspection pictures emailed to you and then went to go get the Tesla and bring it out front. However, while I was waiting, I asked the other employee because it just sort of popped into my head, the car they told me was charged at 100%. However, I wondered how much I should bring the Tesla back at. So I asked him and he said, oh, just bring it back at 80%. So cool, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't ask. So after a couple minutes, they pulled into the front with the Tesla, handed over the key to me. This is what the Tesla rental key looks like. 
basically a card within a plastic case. Kinda sucks because I can't put it in my wallet and it's a bit bulky, but it wasn't a terrible fit in my pocket. Quick start guide on the back. Because I did some research before actually picking up the Model 3 Tesla, I figured out how to actually get into the Tesla. Because honestly, if I didn't watch any of those videos, I wouldn't have known to even get into the Tesla. It's kinda a little bit tricky. Now if you couldn't tell already, this is my first time ever being in a Tesla, and everything is seriously new to me, especially coming from a gas car. So before we go on this trip, I wanted to call my friend and Tesla expert, Anthony Venture, to maybe see if he could give me some tips and tricks on how to drive a Tesla. Okay, Calby, you're a madman for actually <laughs> taking this trip on. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to get there unscathed, but the first thing I have to do is actually represent the brand Tesla hoodie. Basically, the first thing you're gonna do is know how to charge. You're gonna click the little button that's right on there, you click it, it'll open up, then you just stick it in the hole. And you'll see that it says it's starting to charge. And then you can set your actual trip. And if you want to set it to 80% or 90% or 100%. Um, if you're going from 0 to 100, it's probably going to take about 50 minutes, 55 minutes. If you're going from 0 to 80, that might only take about 25 minutes. It gets slower, the more full it actually is. On this trip, since you only have 250 miles, and then factor in you're going to Canada, snowy Canada, so it's going to hurt the battery just a little bit more, so that 80% really is maybe like a 75%. Just know, the faster you go, the, the less range you technically will have. So let's just factor in maybe about 200 miles of effective range. Oh, one second, Calby. Allergies. <laughs> so if you're actually looking to go to Toronto, you're just gonna type it in on the screen right here. You know, within 30 seconds, it should map out all the superchargers that you actually have to hit. Tesla's supercharging network does, just to be safe, only allow you to get down to about 20%. But what I suggest, whatever we are now, maybe 100%, to maybe close to zero. So this way, you're not just charging to 80 and then driving to 20, which means only 60% of battery of range. You're losing out on so many miles and minutes. So if you want to get out, there actually is a little lever here. I wouldn't recommend doing it because if you do this, lift it up this way, it's the emergency exit, and you push out too fast, it's possible you could damage the window. The real way to get out of the Tesla is this little icon right here, door open. You push it, pushes the door out, and you simply just push the door. So now that we're actually on the highway, going 65 miles an hour, we have to figure out how to use autopilot. This lever right here, you push this down twice. If you just do once, you're gonna see this blue come up, and that just means your cruise control. But if you hit it down one more time, hit it twice, now you see the blue steering wheel, which means the car is doing everything. Pretty much you just go on autopilot and you don't even have to look at the road at all. You just enjoy the sights, the car will do everything. Oh, I'm kidding. This, this, be safe, look at the wheel, have the hands on the wheel, not on the camera, and uh, you'll have a good trip. And uh, I guess have fun, everybody. Thank you for watching my segment of Tesla Tuesday with Anthony Venture. Pretty helpful tips. Thanks, Anthony. However, two things Anthony forgot to tell me was how to adjust the mirrors and how to start the car. So how you start the car is pretty easy. All you have to do is take the key card, tap it on the back of the center console, and then while you're doing that, put your foot on the brake and it will start the car. And how you adjust the mirror is on the bottom left. There's a car icon, click on that. And then in the control section, which should be the default first menu, next to the recording icon above the steering icon is mirrors. And all you want to do is click on that. And then if you want to adjust the left mirror, make sure that that's selected. And then on the left scroll wheel on your steering wheel, use your nail or finger to move it to the left if you want to tilt your mirror more to the left. And the opposite if you want to tilt it more to the right. And then if you want it more up or down, just roll the scroll wheel up or down. Pretty easy. And then exactly the same thing if you want to adjust the right mirror. And if you want to adjust your steering wheel, the option to move it up or down is just below the mirror section. So just tap on that and just scroll the wheel up or down until you get it to the position that you're most comfortable with. And then tap it to the left if you want it out. And then tap it to the right if you want it in. My experience when using the scroll wheel, it does take a lot of force to move it left and right. So don't be afraid to be a little bit aggressive with it. Scrolling it though shouldn't be a problem. And then there's also a rear mirror, but there's nothing fancy you have to do with that. Just use your hand to adjust it. And those were the basics that you need to know before you start driving a Tesla. There are some other features that I'll go into that I've learned taking this road trip. But first, let's just go back to the apartment and load up the luggage that we need to bring to go to Canada. So when we went back to the apartment, we started loading in our stuff. Since it was bigger, I 
put in my wife's carry-on in first, then my backpack. On the other side, I slid in the bag with the waters and then put my jacket because it was going to be 40 degrees in Canada when I visited. Then I tried to put away my daily carry-on in the frunk or front trunk, but it didn't fit. I was kind of disappointed since a lot of people made it seem like you could fit anything in the front trunk. So I moved up my jacket and put away the away daily carry-on in the trunk too. And away we went. So the first thing I noticed was the braking. Definitely a lot stranger even with the creep mode activated, which is supposed to act like how a gas card would. If you were to let off the gas pedal, it's supposed to slow down. And when you let go of the brake, it should start creeping up slowly. To me, it didn't really feel that way. The roll up worked the same, but as soon as you took off your foot off the gas pedal, it would slow down quite a bit. Made driving very jerky. I actually prefer the regenerative braking, where if you let off the gas, then the Tesla would immediately slow down. And when you slow down enough to a stop, it will park the car. So stopping at lights, you didn't have to touch anything. So that's what Tesla people mean by one pedal driving. You literally don't have to touch the brake unless you need to stop immediately. Kind of scary to trust at first, but after the fifth time, I trusted the Tesla to stay in park until I hit the gas again. Oh, and a tip with regenerative braking. If I could describe it, you know bikes, the thing you pedal with two wheels? There are two different versions. The ones with brakes on the handles so you can pedal backwards all you want, and you'll come to a slow stop after a while because of friction. However, braking in a Tesla is like the second version of a bike, where the brakes are located in the pedals. As soon as you start to pedal backwards, you're coming to a stop. Same experience with a Tesla. As soon as you let off the gas pedal, the Tesla will violently jerk and come to a stop not too long after, even without you touching the brake. If you want to come to a stop in a Tesla, you have to slowly let off the gas pedal. Then when you get to a slow enough speed, then you can let off the gas pedal entirely. Therefore, the stop won't be as violent. However, if you're driving for a long time, it can be tiring to keep the gas pedal at the same pressure. Any less, it'll jerk you. So I recommend driving in cruise control on the highways. It's pretty awesome when you get used to it. Also extra awesome because if you turn it on this mode, every time when you slow down, it'll actually charge the Tesla's battery. Not enough to make a difference, but a little bit. Pretty easy to change the brake setting. Click on the car icon, click on the pedals and steering, and choose between the three modes, creep, roll, and hold. Creep being like an automatic car, roll being like a manual car, and hold is the regenerative braking. But that's enough about braking, because we'll be reaching our first stop soon, which will be a stop to charge the Tesla in Beaver Creek, Ohio, near Dane, Ohio. I actually had the location set to Columbus, Ohio, which is a bit further away, but the Tesla recommended to stop at Beaver Creek because I would only have about 20% battery left when I reach Beaver Creek. And with traffic and strong winds going on, I didn't want to chance driving further and being run down on the highway. And let me tell you, refilling a Tesla is a thousand times more convenient than refilling a gas car. All you have to do is back into any empty Tesla charger parking spot, grab the charger, press the button on the charger, stab it into the charge port, then wait for the light to turn green and that's about it. It did take me a while to figure out where to press on the charger because the button wasn't a different color. All there was was a thin circle and a bump you can feel. But as a first time driver of a Tesla, it wasn't obvious to me, even with Anthony telling me where it is. However, if you're having problems, you could always tap the charge port, but you can't push it down. Now, how about paying? Since the Tesla superchargers don't take credit cards and this is a rental, basically everything will be charged back to Hertz. And after you return the car back to Hertz, about three or five days later, they'll charge the credit card you gave them. Very simple. Only took about 10 to 15 minutes to charge to make it to the next destination Columbus which was only about 100 miles away and when the Tesla was done charging exactly the same thing but reverse hold the charger press and hold the button wait until the light changes blue and put the charger back at first I thought I would feel it more when it released apparently not there'll be other things I learned about the Tesla charging but we'll go over that when we get there we had to get to Canada before it got too late oh strange thing to get used to at least for me since I get very easily distracted every time you use your blinker on the Tesla screen in the middle it will show your blind spot very useful when changing lanes on the highway when you finally get used to how far things are in the camera. Very distracting when you're wanting to turn left or right on local roads. Also check this out, very glitchy. Probably the same frame rates as the Tesla camera. To Columbus. And at this point I was using the autopilot. So you know like how Anthony said, right lever pull down once is cruise control and twice really fast is autopilot. Four times though puts you on Rainbow Road. Honestly very annoying. And I don't really know why autopilot is so hyped. It's nice and smoother than other car manufacturers versions, but I definitely would not trust it enough to actually go to sleep. For straight roads, it was fine. Even slightly curved roads, fine. But a harsh turn, it tries to keep the same speed if there isn't a car in front of you. And it's one of the scariest experiences in my life. With highways that split, it chooses the closest lane to go into, thereby needing to immediately take control if you end up in the wrong one. That section on the highway with merge lanes, usually located on the slow lanes, autopilot would try to be in the middle, so it'll drive towards right, then back towards 
towards the left. Another issue with autopilot is when it's driving near a truck, it tends to drive closer and hug it. Maybe it's because it's a large object it can track. However, when I complained about this to Anthony, he told me it was all in my head. Okay, fanboy. And every 30-ish seconds, it would yell at you to keep your hands on the wheel with a blue light without audio warnings first. Even get this warning with my hands on the wheel. Gotta play with the wheel a bit. You can't keep your hands stationary. Oh, and this is a problem you probably won't experience, but I was given the Tesla with low washer fluid, and the windshield wipers are automatic if you turn on autopilot. So there was a bunch of crap on the windshield, but no washer fluid. So the wipers kept turning on. Kind of annoying. Overall, I didn't hate it. Quite enjoyed it actually, but overhyped in my opinion. Then we made it to the second charging spot, Columbus, Ohio. Specifically, Polaris, Ohio. And this is what I like about charging the Tesla. You can eat and charge at the same time. Oh yeah, this is what the charging screen looks like when you're in the car. You get to see your estimated charging time. If you put in a destination, then it will give you the estimated time to charge to make it to the next charging station along your route. If you don't put anything, then it will give you the estimate to charge full or to the level you set it at, like how Anthony showed earlier. It looks just like charging a phone or something, with even more details like how much power the Tesla was receiving and how fast it was charging, if you care about that. And this is what it looked like when you're not in the car. Oh, and also we used this stop to rearrange some stuff and got our passports and put them in the center console, which was very deep. You could fit a whole tissue box in here. Still was a ways from the border, but we didn't want to forget and go into the trunk when it was too late. And there was something that bothered me. You didn't physically click on the screen to unlock the Tesla, even when you unlock the Tesla by tapping the key card onto the car. The passenger doors won't open, the trunk wouldn't open, and you couldn't tap on the touchscreen to open the front. I understand it makes sense, especially knowing most people driving a Tesla has access to controls in the Tesla app, but for rental, it was very annoying that every time my wife wanted to get into the car, I had to tap the key card onto the Tesla, bend down and touch the touchscreen to unlock the Tesla so she can get in. Also, I kept forgetting I had to unlock the car before I could open the front. Then when we got back on the road, heading to our next stop, Cleveland, to charge again, another annoying thing that only applies to Tesla rentals, the speed limit was locked at 80 miles per hour, and it was locked on chill mode. Now I get it. Hertz is probably worried about people driving too fast and honestly I've done it. Where the speed limit was 35 miles per hour and I was accidentally driving at 60 miles per hour. However most roads I was driving on was 70 miles per hour and you know most people drive 5 miles per hour over the speed limit. That's fine. But here's where the problem comes. When a truck is driving 75 miles per hour, swerves into your lane and there are cars behind you and you're trying not to get hit can cause a problem. Quite a common problem actually happened to me at least 5 times on this 1400 mile road trip. The second issue you'll come across with the speed limit maximum is on autopilot, you can only cruise at a maximum of 74 miles per hour. Luckily I wasn't driving on any roads with an 80 mile per hour speed limit, or I would have needed to use my foot to drive the entire time, which would have been exhausting. But I couldn't keep up with the flow of traffic, because most people around me were driving at 75 miles per hour. Not a big deal, I was only 1 mile per hour slower than other people, but I think it's worth bringing up. Third, and this actually happened to me later in the trip, you know that stereotype that people are mean to Tesla drivers? It's not like constant or anything, but I've had two incidents, both happened to be New York State drivers near Niagara Falls on the US side, both times on a one lane road. The car in front of me was driving slow, like 40 miles per hour slower than the speed limit. Finally, when the lanes open up to multiple lanes, I tried to pass them, which wasn't a problem because the acceleration is still faster even on chill mode. They saw me trying to pass them, they drove 90 miles per hour and cut me off, then slowed down. I don't know if they don't like Teslas, they were just being New York drivers or they were just buttholes, but the speed limit max definitely didn't help me in those situations. Also, when you hit the speed limit max, it made a really annoying loud chime. Enough about my rant, we finally made it to Cleveland. Only one problem, the Tesla superchargers we wanted to go to, which was the Macedonia Ohio superchargers, were all full, with a line waiting for the next available spot. We didn't know what to do, especially since we only had about 10% battery left. My wife was panicking and trying to Google if AAA would deliver electricity. So I texted Anthony, and of course he was no help. He told me to make a reservation in the Tesla app. I was like, Anthony, buddy, this is a Hertz rental. I don't have access to the Tesla app. And apparently that was surprising to him. I guess Turo, a person-to-person -person car rental service, lets you have app access or something. However, Anthony checked on his Tesla that there were open superchargers just down the road at Twinsburg, Ohio, which wasn't too far from us. And thankfully, when we got to the Twinsburg chargers, there were two empty spots cool cool. At this charger, we wanted to charge it a little bit more. So I did try to play the games that were loaded on the Tesla. There was like a driving game I tried out, kind of like Mario Kart, very fun. However, I didn't realize when you play the game, you are actually moving the tires and activating the brake lights. So when I was done playing the game, the tires were turned very far to the right. So a word of advice, make sure your steering wheel is straight before you exit the game. Then finally, when we were done charging, we headed to the next supercharger in Erie, Pennsylvania. Had a bunch of Tesla superchargers and it was located behind a Hilton Garden 
it in. Oh, also I forgot to mention, this is what the Tesla sounds like when it's charging. It's very loudish. Almost sounds like it's gonna blow or something. Oh yeah, speaking of sound, driving in a Tesla Model 3 felt like driving a Toyota Corolla. The highway noises were very loud. You could hear all the wind noises and bumps. For me and my wife to talk to each other, we basically had to yell. And I watched Tesla videos where the reviewer says it's because it's an electric car, therefore you're not hearing the engine noise, which I think is bull. I think the Tesla Model 3 just isn't insulated that well, but I guess that's my opinion of driving an EV for the first time. The seats in a Tesla are nice though. Felt like a lazy boy couch seat. Gotta be the best feature on a Tesla. Finally, we made it to the Canadian border. Waited in line as normal when you cross the border. During the wait, I changed the miles per hour to kilometers per hour since that's what they're using in Canada. Sucks the Tesla doesn't do it automatically, at least it's pretty simple to do. Click on the car icon, display, scroll all the way down, under the distance category, tap on kilometers. Easy right? Just remember to do it before you start driving in Canada. Unless you can do the conversion from miles to kilometers in your head. And finally it was our turn to answer some questions before we allowed entry into Canada. But would we have a problem taking a rental car we rented in the United States to Canada without the Canadian rental insurance, like the Hertz person said? And the answer was nope, we didn't have any problems. They let us on through without showing them anything extra apart from just giving them our passport. Cool, because I was worried about that. So onward to one more charging stop before we can make it to our final destination, Toronto, Canada. But let me tell you, driving in Canada is another experience. People out here either drive really fast and weave in and out of traffic, even at night, or they drive really slow. Very strange. Freaked us out the entire time though. Oh, and also, you know those YouTubers that say in review videos that driving a Tesla for the first time? There is a learning curve because all the information, your speed and charge is all all on the right side. Honestly, that didn't bother me. I got used to it fairly quickly. Wasn't an issue. However, one thing with having the screen on the side was driving at night. You know sometimes you're just driving and it's an empty road so you start to daydream? Yeah, well, when I came out of that daydream, I panicked and was like, where is the instrument cluster? Oh yeah, it's on the right side. Happened to me at least three times on this road trip, especially at night. Is it a deal breaker or a big deal? No. Is it quite embarrassing? Yup. Finally arrived to the last charging stop which was located near the Casablanca Hotel. Very cute tiny city town area. Here's what the Tesla superchargers looked like at night. Kind of neat. 100% makes it easier to see. This is what the charging screen looked like in Canada. Of course, the only difference was instead of miles, it was in kilometers. After we were done charging, we drove another hour and finally made it to Toronto. This trip from Lexington, Kentucky to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, according to Google Maps, should have taken 9 hours and 30 minutes. What actually happened was we started driving at 8.30am and arrived around 11pm. So in total, it took us 14 hours and 30 minutes. 5 extra hours compared to Google Maps. However, you have to remember we stopped at other places than chargers, like to get lunch and to use the bathroom. So counting those and from my experience driving a gas car, the Tesla charging probably only added about 2 extra hours for the first 600 miles of this trip. So I would say for every 5 hours they would normally take you to drive a gas car, I would add an extra hour for an electric car. Of course, if the electric car has access to fast and reliable charging. However, even though it took longer, I gotta say, with the autopilot and comfortable seats, the drive was way more bearable. The next day, one thing I found out, I loved the frunk. Even though it's kind of small, I used it to store my backpack, it was a perfect fit, and then we we're off to the next hotel I booked in Canada. Check out this Tesla, very cool to look at. However, would you ever do this to your car? In my opinion, it makes it look very cheap. And of course, before we went to the next hotel, I wanted to make sure I charged again, at least a little bit because I was hovering around 20%. Oh yeah, as you can see, instead of a percentage, it shows the distance the Tesla still has available, which I prefer more than a percentage, I don't know what exactly means. You can easily change it by tapping on the battery icon to change it back and forth from percentage to distance. However, on the map it will still show you the percentage you have when you reach the next destination. Oh and one thing I really like about the Tesla supercharger network is most of them have something to do around them, at least a place you can use the bathroom at. Like this one I stopped at Burlington, Ontario, Canada, has a mall you can go to. Makes it very convenient. Then when we made it to the hotel and parked the Tesla in the parking garage, which had a free charger, pretty awesome. However, at the time, I didn't know the Hertz rental had a piece I needed to use a non-Tesla charger under the trunk floorboard. I thought they would put it in the glove box or something. So always check underneath the trunk space too. Could save you some money. Then for the third and last day we were in Canada, we headed to Shelby Sharma, so good, and charged one last time in Canada. And this is what's cool about the charging, and I don't see as big 
of a deal. The Tesla is comfortable and the charging usually takes about 10 to 30 minutes if you want it fully charged. While waiting, you can just eat lunch and do two things at once. I know you can do this with a gas car too, but honestly, I don't want to stay at a gas station longer than I have to, unless it's Bucky's. Oh, and I heard that Bucky's near me recently installed Tesla superchargers so Tesla drivers can also experience gas station fever dreams. However, one thing, and this is very important, always set your destination to a Tesla supercharger in advance because the Tesla will warm up the battery for you so it can charge faster. At this charging stop, I didn't do that, so the charging rate wasn't the best. Driving some more? Here we were going to Niagara Falls on the Canada side, which is overrated in my opinion. If you gave me a choice, I would skip it. Interesting thing though about driving in Canada, the signs were kind of small and some of the signs also came in French. And back across the US border. Kind of interesting, the Tesla vision, I think it's called. It can accurately show trash cans on the street, but it started having problems when it saw the lights at the US border. Thought they were traffic lights. Also, I didn't have a problem crossing the US border in a rental car. I handed over our passports and the global entry cards, which the global entry wasn't necessary. Answered one question and away we went. And remember, change the units of kilometers back into miles, so car icon, display, scroll down, tap on miles. I stopped at Erie, Pennsylvania to charge again, then just doing some more night driving to get to our final hotel in Cleveland. Then for the next day, we charged in Macedonia, you know the supercharger we couldn't get into the last time. We wanted to see if there are any spots because this supercharger is the closest to the highway we need to get on. However, in only a couple minutes, the chargers were all filled up, so we were lucky we got there when we did. Oh yeah, by the way, on the Tesla map, there'll be these red dots with numbers on them. Those are locations of superchargers with the number being how many spots are available. If there are no spots left, it'll look like this. Also, the charging station gets filled up, the charge will dramatically decrease. So when you help it when you go to charge, try to leave space in between cars because sometimes chargers next to each other will use the same power. So if two people are using it, the power will be split in half. But when more spots are empty out, the charge should increase again. Then to the next stop, which was at Dublin, Ohio, near Columbus, Ohio. And the craziest thing happened to us at this supercharger. Before we started charging, we wanted to grab something to drink and eat. On our way there, there was this Canadian goose that popped out of nowhere and got in front of the Tesla. I thought I ran it over, but apparently not. use the Tesla acceleration to get away from that freaking goose. However, I couldn't avoid it on the way back. And I think I either hit it or it hit me with its beak. There was a loud bang noise when I passed it. Oh, when I drove to the chargers, I checked for any damages though. Didn't seem like there was any. If you want to access the dash cam footage, there is a USB in the glove box you can plug into your computer. Or you can click on the dash cam icon on the bottom of the screen to watch back your footage. If you want to record something that happened, click on the car icon and press record. And it'll go back, I think, about 30 minutes. Oh, and here's something to note. When charging in Tesla, there are no garbage cans near the chargers and people are gross. There is just a bottle of pee here. People are disgusting. And it wasn't just at this charger. Basically, every charger I stopped at, unless there was a business or gas station very close to the charger, had bottles of weird fluid, trash bags, and broken glass. You would think the same people who drive Teslas are also the same people who vacation on carnival cruises. Freaking clowns some people. And then the last stop before making it home to Lexington, Kentucky was Cincinnati, Ohio. And this was an interesting stop because across from the Tesla chargers were the Electrify America chargers. I've never seen them before. They're kind of huge and have a hole at the top. Maybe to cool it down. Also, there was this Hyundai car charging at it. Looked pretty cool. These are, I believe, believe the power generators for them, and apparently you have to tap some card before you start charging. Neat. But finally, we were back in the state of Kentucky. The next and final day I had the Tesla, I had to return it at 12 p.m. But before that, I had to charge it to at least 80% before I return it, or else they'll charge me a fee. So I went to the only Tesla supercharger in the city of Lexington. Kind of strange because I see a lot of electric cars driving around here. Teslas, Rivians, Mustangs, even Lucids. Then I drove the Tesla back to Hertz, but not before trying out one more Easter egg trick that Anthony taught me. Ho, ho, ho. And arrived at 12.01 p.m. They weren't too strict on the time, so basically I arrived on time. I handed over the keys, they did a quick check, and returned it back to the garage. I did have to wait quite a while before they checked me out, because apparently the Santa Easter egg didn't go away, and a mechanic said there was a Santa on the screen and thought it was the coolest thing ever, and just kept asking the Hertz representative how they did it, and just rambling on. It was probably about 10 minutes before they came back to check me out. Then I ordered an Uber and went home. This is what the final receipt looked like, with the additional charges being the cost of charging the Tesla during this 40 
1,400 mile road trip. So in total with the rental costing $214.05, liability insurance $94.25, and charging $155.31. It came out to $463.61 for a four day road trip. If I could do it over, I probably wouldn't pay for the liability. The Tesla felt pretty safe to drive. I think I wouldn't have a problem hitting someone else. And real quick, important last minute tip, never use toll roads. I used a toll road on my way up to Canada and it didn't have any toll booths, just cameras taking pictures of license plates. Hertz charged me a $10 fee for a $4 toll. But yeah, that was my full detailed experience renting a Tesla and crossing the border with it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll see you later.